Hello everybody, Kevin Dennis, Technical Service with Werner Fall Protection. Welcome to this education session titled Self-Retracting Lifelines, Fact or Fiction. We are going to discuss common statements about self-retracting lifelines and confirm them as either fact or fiction. I think everybody's pretty familiar with how self-retracting lifelines operate. There's different lengths, there's different line materials, there's different hook options, but they all kind of operate on the same premise. One end of the self-retracting lifeline connects to the anchor point, the other end connects to the worker's harness, and the line pays out and retracts as you work. If a fall should occur, the unit locks. There's a speed brake inside all of the units that locks according to speed, and then there's some type of energy absorber either inside the unit or on the outside of the unit that dissipates the fall energy. So now that we know what they are and basically how they work, let's take a look at the first statement. Statement number one is that SRLs are better than any other fall arrest system due to clearance. And I would tell you this statement is fact. Generally speaking, self-retracting lifelines outperform other fall arrest systems because they lock so quickly. The person falling doesn't generate thousands and thousands of pounds worth of energy, and they lock very quickly so they don't have the opportunity to contact surrounding structure as it is correct as they typically need less clearance. SRLs offer workers an incredible freedom of movement, they're very user friendly, and they control arresting forces by that internal or external energy absorber. However, keep in mind there are thousands of applications and no one tool can do everything, so situations where the anchorage location changes, if a person's on the slope where they might be sliding, or you're on a granular surface where you might be sinking, SRLs are often challenged with those applications. Statement number two is self-retracting lifelines shouldn't be used because the energy absorber will fully deploy. This statement is actually fiction. It is false. Many people look at the external energy absorber and are reluctant to use the SRL thinking that this energy absorber will fully deploy. And they don't. They only deploy as to how much they need. It might only be a couple of inches, it might be a couple of feet, but they deploy according to how much the person weighs and how far the person falls. So provided with every self-retracting lifeline is a clearance chart that plots the anchorage location and its offset. And when you plot those two together, it'll give you a clearance requirement. That clearance requirement includes the fall distance, harness stretch, a factor of safety, and the deployment of the energy absorber. So in the field, you don't have to concern yourself with the deployment distance of the energy absorber. It's already included in the clearance chart. So use the clearance chart according to your application and you're gonna be good to go. Statement number three, self-retracting lifelines must be serviced every year and can only be used for five years. This statement is also fiction. The life expectancy of self-retracting lifelines is based upon function and condition, not the age. There isn't a requirement to service the SRL every single year. You would send it in for servicing when the inspection reveals some type of defect or issue. Self-retracting lifelines need to be inspected before each use and at least once per year by a competent person. But as long as that SRL is in good condition and it continues to function, there's no reason to send it in for service and it can just continue to be used until it cycles out of service. So an SRL does not have to be serviced every year or taken out of service after five. Statement number four, self-retracting lifelines must be removed and replaced before August of 2023 because there are new requirements for them. This statement is also fiction. There are new requirements for self-retracting lifelines, but this doesn't mean that your existing models have to be removed or replaced. Your existing models can continue to be used until they cycle out of life. ANSI, Werner, and OSHA do not require your previous SRL models to be removed or replaced. The greatest change with the requirements for self-retracting lifelines are how they're categorized. Class A and B aren't being used anymore. The changes are now class one and two. To make it a little easier to understand, the classification is based upon where the anchorage location is in the field. So if you have an anchor that's higher than your back D-ring, 
you'd use a class one SRL. If the anchorage location is lower than the back D-ring, you would use a class two SRL. So for example, if you're using a leading edge SRL where it's anchored at foot level, that's lower than your back D-ring, so you would use a class two SRL. It's worth noting that class two SRLs must also pass all of the class one requirements. So class one or SRLs are for above back D-ring applications, and class two SRLs can be used for above or below back D-ring applications. So thank you very much, everybody. I hope this little fact or fiction session helped you out a little bit. Reach out to Werner if you have any questions.